So thanks everyone for joining. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Marla McCowan. I'm the Director of Training, Outreach, and Support with the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission. I'm joined here today by a lot of my colleagues from the MIDC. Regional managers are here. Uh, I see Kelly and Susan and Barb. Um, and then also our grant manager, Rebecca Mack, is joining us today too, and our training analyst, Deborah Mitchell. Thank you, everybody. So over the next several weeks, we're spending most of our time right now working on FY22 compliance plans. Uh, a component of that planning involves training people uh, how to use eGrams, how to use this platform, this new grant management system platform to submit your FY22 compliance plan and cost analysis. Um, this is new this year. Um, and it's new for you. Uh, some people might be familiar with eGrams itself, but this has been um, developed specifically, this particular program has been developed specifically for submitting the MIDC's compliance plan application and cost analysis. Uh, it's new for us as well. And um, I'm just going to ask, please, if everybody could be you know, a little bit patient. We're going to be very patient with you. We're hoping that you'll be patient with us as we're also learning and working through this new system as well. So this is what the eGrams application website looks like for the MIDC. If you could just take a minute just to, um, just to take a look around here, uh, you will notice up in the top left corner the MIDC's logo appears. Um, and this is important because there are a couple of other um, statewide, uh, statewide agencies that use eGrams as a platform, including DHHS. Um, if you land on the DHHS's eGrams application, you're gonna have that logo over to the top left corner. Please don't use that. Don't set up your user profile there. You need to be in the MIDC's eGrams application and set up your user profile here. So who should set up a user profile? Really anyone who is going to be submitting the FY22 compliance plan application and cost analysis, as well as anyone who is going to be working on the plan and cost analysis in eGrams um, as part of the, the local system, as part of the submission process. Um, and you're going to be able to find that on the web. I'm going to display here the um, the website address at the bottom here, it should also be in the chat. And as I mentioned here, for anyone who's just joined in the last couple of minutes, if you want to minimize the screen and open up this website address, uh, if you have the luxury of two screens, that's great, but even still, you should be able to, if you can minimize this and then be working through the website itself, um, I think I'll be going slow enough that you can do that and follow along. When you land on the website, you will see over to the left hand side, uh, a menu and the option that you are looking for here if you are new to eGrams um, is creating a user profile. And again, this is going to be new to the MIDC's uh, eGrams program. So this is the first time you've landed on the MIDC's eGrams application, create your user profile. And you're going to fill out the information uh, for yourself. Um, just follow along starting with creating your login name, I suggest uh, first initial last name. You're gonna create a password. It can be any combination of letters or numbers and then confirm that password. Indicate your prefix, just clicking the uh, little radial dial button. Enter your first name, then your last name. In some cases, it might automatically populate with a first initial last name for your display name. Otherwise, go ahead and type in something like this for your display. This is going to be what's displayed and welcoming you in subsequent uh, visits to the MIDC's eGrams platform when you log in. You're going to need to fill out anything that has an asterisk next to it. So for example, the address line, this would be your mailing address, in the city, The state should be automatically populated as Michigan, and then you'll fill out the zip code. Your phone number. And then your email address. When you get to the part about the designation or title, this is referring to your role in your system. 
uh, what your uh, job description is. So you're going to see uh, a, a little button there that has three dots. If you select those three dots, I've already sort of pre-populated this here, but if you select those three dots, it will bring up something like 53, there might be more now um, descriptions uh, for your job. You can scroll through those and select the one that's the most appropriate for you. The only um, option that we don't have here um, that might be applicable to some users is judge. Um, if you have the title as judge, um, you might want to choose somebody else from your court um, to be uh, to set up the user profile and enter the application, or you can also choose other, which is an option at the end. So once you find your uh, job description, you're gonna have to actually select that button. It's not enough to hover over the description. Those aren't hyperlinked. Select that button and it will populate for you. The next thing that you're gonna to have to do is select your role code. So your role code refers to your role in the MIDC's grant program. And everyone who is going to be registering as a new user in the system is a grantee. You're only gonna have three options here, grantee, grantor, or regional manager please select grantee. If you select grantor or regional manager, you're not gonna be able to enter your application and we'll have to go in um, and, and make a correction there. So please make sure that you select grantee. It's also important to select grantee because we've found in completing the balance of this user profile, if you haven't selected that, some of the other fields aren't going to populate like the next field regarding your parent agency. Sometimes also the parent agency doesn't automatically display before selecting the county. So you might have to actually fill these out in reverse order. But assuming you have the option to select your parent agency and then county, you will also do so from a drop-down menu after selecting those three little buttons. You're welcome to upload a photo or your signature. Um, a photograph can be, you know, just a small, um, you know, whatever those little thumbnail pictures are, if you want to do that, it's not required for our grant program. It's also not required for you to enter your signature, but that might be convenient later on when it comes time for contracting, uh, if you want to have your signature in the system. You can do that just by adding from your own files, and for the signature in particular, that can really be uh, in for almost any format. You can do it as a picture, a JPEG, or one of those PNG files, or even a PDF. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just an option for you at that time. And when you're done completing the parent agency and county, uh, and then photo and signature if you want, select OK. You're going to be required to enter at least one security question. So select OK and then enter the security question. These are pretty common security questions really for any site that allows you to, uh, if, if necessary, reset your password. And that's the purpose for which it's being asked. You can choose the security question that you're most comfortable with. You only have to select one, enter the answer and select okay. And again, uh, this is helpful in the event that you forget your password later on. At this point, you should get a message that your user profile was created successfully, and you can log in with your username and password that you just created. Please make sure that you do keep that username and password that you just created in a safe space wherever you record your username and passwords. Um, I, I know that there are a lot of methods that people use to keep those safe, whatever that is for you, please, uh, please do that. And keep it safe because you'll need it for the subsequent pieces starting the FY22 compliance plan. I'm going to pause here for a minute to see if there are any questions, but those are the basic components of setting up your user profile. Great question. What if you are representing multiple funding units? Um, so there are two answers to this question. If you are working in a regional model and you are setting up the use your username and profile and starting the application in a regional model, for example, you have a primary funding unit or a fiduciary county that we contract with, that the MIDC contracts with, you're just going to indicate that uh, fiduciary county. So for example, if you are in um, from Baraga, Houghton, and Keweenaw, 
which has a regional, regional model for delivering indigent defense. Houghton is the fiduciary county, so you would select Houghton. So the other version of this is if you are a managed assigned council administrator and you will be submitting an application for more than one system. Um, so you're gonna create a user profile and I'm gonna just use an example, for example here, you're the managed design council administrator in Southfield and you're gonna be entering Southfield's plan, but you also are the managed design council administrator for East Point. So you're gonna be entering East Point's plan as well. This is not a regional model. These are individual systems that are gonna be submitting their plans. You can do that. You would set up a user profile and pick a primary county. And then you're going, there are some specific instructions that you will need for setting up a multi-user agency. And I can send those to you and I will send those actually, those are step-by-step -step instructions that I will send um, after the session is over and I can send those to everybody and we'll include those on our website as well. But two options and both are possible with a single username. And this is the way that you will be working on the application. So I just want to mention here, if you are not going to be the person who is primarily responsible for submitting the compliance plan and cost analysis, you might not want to take this step. Um, the person who starts the application is considered the owner, for lack of a better description, of that application. If you do add this and then you need to change that later on, that's easy enough to do. Um, just let us know. Um, but for uh, most people on this call, I anticipate that you will be the person that is primarily responsible for working on the plan and cost analysis and then submitting through the MIDC's eGram system. And the way that you do this, again, uh, if you are interested in doing this right now, again, I can uh, go slow enough that we can walk through this process, but you're going to use those same credentials that you just created and go back to the MIDC's eGrams website. In this instance, you're using the login credentials that you just created and use those same credentials, the username and password um, to log into the MIDC's eGram system, enter those credentials here, and then click OK. You'll be greeted with uh, this welcome screen. Um, at this point, you shouldn't have any pending tasks or notifications. You're going to be adding the FY22 application and then beginning to enter it. We're gonna start along the ribbon at the top with the drop-down menu for project director. When you select project director or hover over it, one of the options, the top option there is start a new application. Select start a new application. And you're gonna get a screen that's pretty much blank here. Um, make sure that you are in the add mode over to the left. That should be by default how uh, you land on this page. Use the menu button here to select the grant program options. The only option you should see is CPA 22, Compliance Plan and Cost Analysis Renewal for fiscal year 2022. You're gonna select that option and click OK and it should display that the record was successfully added. And that allows you to move forward and start entering the application. The way that you will do that is going back to that menu, to the grant application, drop down menu, and select enter your grant application. You're going to see this added, the applica application entry work in progress. This is a hyperlink, meaning you would click on it and it would take you to the next page to begin entering your application and cost analysis. You're going to be reminded of the deadline, which of course everybody knows is April 27th at 11.59 PM. Once you select okay and acknowledge the deadline, you're going to get the screen that allows you to walk through the compliance plan and cost analysis and begin entering the information, beginning with the applicant information. Um, if you land here, you're welcome to look around um, and see the questions uh, that are asked and the format that they are asked in. Um, and you know, if you don't want to enter anything right now, you can just simply close out of this and return at any time using those same credentials on the MIDC's eGrams website. We do hope that you go to, um, to our website 
itself and go to the grants page and use the materials that are available to assist with compliance planning. Our commission in February of uh, 2021 approved the, the, uh, the substantive portions of the compliance planning cost analysis. And we have those, uh, they are in obviously the eGRIMS format, but we do uh, have them available in a Word document that we hope is helpful for you as you're working through the plans and cost analysis. If you use the Word document, you can type into it, you know, just like any other Word document. And then when you get to eGRAMS, you can copy and paste that information over into the eGRAMS platform. The cost analysis is uh, hopefully a, a very familiar uh, Excel spreadsheet at this point. And we do also have a grant manual. Um, there have been some revisions to the grant manual since February. So you will want to check that out in terms of allowable costs. It's worth it, we think, to, um, to actually go through this Word document and populate it, as I said, because you can copy and paste over into the eGRAMS application. The other tip that we would offer is that you print the document, uh, the Word document itself. We found that that significantly reduces errors when we've been going through the testing phase. And the reason why is because the questions in the Word document track exactly as the questions are displayed in the eGRAMS platform. We have plenty of training opportunities, as I mentioned, uh, coming up. Um, the next pieces of training that we'll be doing after people have their user profile set up in eGrams would be entering the compliance plan application. We've got a couple of versions of that, um, one for new users, uh, new to eGrams, people who aren't as familiar with the eGrams platform or who have never used it before. We'll take some time during that presentation to go through the features of eGrams, how you navigate, uh, move forward and backwards through the pages, save and validate those pages uh, before submitting the compliance plan in an effort to reduce errors. We also have one, uh, it'll be a very similar training, but it won't have that, you know, how to navigate eGrams part of it, just working through the compliance plan and cost analysis. Well, also, um, there's a, a little bit of an opportunity before April 27th, if you, if you submit your plan and cost analysis through eGrams and the regional managers take, uh, take a look at that um, and need to send it back to you for any revisions, uh, we will do a short training on how you make those revisions and send those back through the eGram system. Um, so watch for those trainings as well if, that, if that's applicable to you. And then finally, um, before the deadline, we will have a um, number of opportunities for one-on-one -on -one support for submitting the compliance plan and cost analysis. Now, these are not, um, these are not going to be system-specific trainings. These are generally trainings designed around eGrams. You should be working with your regional manager on completing the substantive portions of the plan and cost analysis as you would any other year. You're welcome to contact us anytime I'll leave the email address up here for just a minute. That's my email address and my cell phone as well. We're happy to help. Um, and especially with eGrams, with this piece around eGrams, if there's anything that I could do to help you set up your user profile or actually facilitate the submission of your plan and cost analysis, we're more than happy to do so.